Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your boy, Dave Noodles, and we are on the Type 88 Show, where we talk to people about how they turn their dreams into reality. And this woman here doesn't stop. She's in the <laughs> fashion game, whether she's making bags or shirts or content that's inspiring people to improve their mental health and their well-being. She does not stop. So I want to welcome MML to the Type 88 Show. How are you today? <laughs> Hi, Dave. Thank you for having me. <laughs> yeah, it's great to have you here. We Thank we you. linked almost about a decade ago. I when know. When you were working on like one of your dreams with merch, and that was really <laughs> awesome. You definitely brought my vision to life. Um, for people who don't know, Dave and I collabed on my first release for my then brand TSO. Um, which was based off of my then blog, The Single Lady. Um, my blog currently is called MMLism, which stands for all things me, <laughs> being nice. that I am MML. Um, a lot of people ask me that, like, what does that mean? Or they don't know how to pronounce it. And I'm like, it's just MMLism. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, so that was a decade ago. I am now rebranding after having some issues with uh, intellectual property. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's all good. Um, I'm coming back. And, yeah, I have a streetwear line coming out. I have a handbag line coming out. Um, doing my mental health uh, series, which is called Mental That's Health so Mondays. Cool. So every Monday I am posting either tips or suggestions on different topics related to mental health and awesome. ways to navigate that on the 19th of every month. I also drop um, tips for different topics that also involve uh, mental health. And cool. it's been, it's been good. You know, people really respond to it. People are really loving it. Um, people find That's it helpful. Great. So yeah, let's let's try to take it back to like the early days. So like early on you dropped the line. Mm -hmm. You said TSL and then you yeah. also had the blog The Single Lady. Mm -hmm. So that was like was that your intro into content and like dropping blogs and interview, like different yes. content and putting stuff out? Awesome. Yes, it was. Um got out of a relationship hence The Single Lady. Um and that just took off by itself. Um, a majority of the readers were female based and they started asking me for merch. And I had never really thought about it. Um, but then I said, okay, like, let's do it, you know? Yeah. So um, the first couple of releases for TSL by MML were geared just for women, which Again, you helped me create the first line, Figures Over Niggas, um, you know, which was a pun against money over bitches. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that uh, we created that. Then I went on to create a couple of more. And then I had the fellas asking me, well, what about us? <laughs> like, some yeah. of us read your blog, too. So... I decided to go unisex and after that I never turned back. Um, I've been creating unisex clothes ever since. Um, That's awesome. Pieces that were found in Richmond hood or, you know, alongside my own website, or, you know, things of that nature. And That's awesome. Yeah. After uh, having one of my designs stolen uh, at the end of 2020, I decided that uh, I needed to rebrand and officially legitimize my business because I hadn't had any legal footing on it. I felt gotcha. um, there was, I felt um, that there was going to be a point where I was going to get tired of the TSL by MML. I felt like that wasn't it, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. even though it was it for the moment. It was just something that I couldn't concrete agree to, <laughs> if that makes sense. So I had never really wanted to, do anything legally with it um and gotcha. it was working the way that it was yeah but after that uh situation at the end of 2020 i i had a you know an awakening <laughs> i guess you could say 
and I was like, okay, it was a hard lesson, but I maneuvered through. And yeah, I was like, you know what? If God let me do it once, He can let me do it again. And of course, I did it three times now. <laughs> That's crazy. So yeah, so it's like even though I took the L, I I definitely gained something in return, way better, you know. Um, yeah, I you flipped released it. Any, yeah, <laughs> I haven't That's released any about. of the new merch. Um, yeah. Since when? Um, haven't released any merch since 2020. Um, the streets are ready. They're, uh... I know. They are. <laughs> They're calling. <laughs> so definitely, so... um, dropping some stuff for spring, summer this year. And, That's um, I'm still perfecting the bag line. I'm not even going to hold you. Um, yeah. It's not but something the streetwear that, is dropping this summer? Yeah, the streetwear will drop this summer. That's dope. Um, if I feel 100% comfortable with what I have in terms of the bag line, then I'll be dropping that as well. But I don't want to prematurely drop it, of you course. know? Yeah. So, um, but That's yeah. awesome. So, in terms of, like, merch, so you dropped the merch, you know, we helped, I helped you print it or whatever. You, you came mm -hmm. up with the ideas and, like, the design and all that. Mm -hmm. Which was, which was really cool because I remember I met someone from your family, and they mm -hmm. were like, "Oh, my niece, or my my cousin, or whatever, she wants to print these this merch up." And I was like, "Of mm -hmm. course," and um, and it was cool because you had all these like I remember we followed each other on um Twitter or whatever, mm -hmm. and a lot of your tweets, you know, it's it, they were cool because you were just speaking your mind. Yeah. But I know in the past, I think maybe some of your tweets have maybe been misunderstood or people didn't even always know what you were saying. But what I loved about it, regardless of the responses or sometimes maybe confusion or they're all kind of subjective. You know, you say your part and then people could take it or leave it. Right. But but that was always cool. And you've you've always kept that vibe literally since I met you. And you yeah. don't. And Which even with the merch, a <laughs> yeah, you came out with very edgy merch from mm -hmm. the jump too, you know, from to even jump. put, you know, middle fingers or different things, mm -hmm. you know, as a lady, I know as a woman, there's sometimes this like, you kind of have to be careful, you have to be careful, you have to worry about how you're being viewed and all these different things. I have mm -hmm. no clue how that feels, but like. How did it feel kind of jumping into kind of a male dominated world with the streetwear as a woman? Like, what did yeah, you do? It, it, what did you deal with? How did you get through that? Or, um, or what did you do to kind of break some of the stigmas was, or whatever? It was very risky, um, from especially to come out with figures over niggas. Like, a lot of people didn't understand it. They were like, what does that even mean? And, like, I had to go into explaining it, and then they would be like, oh, like, and have that aha moment. But some people weren't yeah. receptive to it, and some were like, uh, but why? And it's like, why not? <laughs> you know, like, why is it okay for, you know, uh, one gender to subjectify the women and make it seem like, oh, well, yeah, like, fuck bitches get money. And why is it not okay for us? You know, like... Obviously, since then, I've evolved tremendously, and yeah, I not that I um, don't hold the same morals anymore, but you know, I've grown a lot. So that isn't something that you're gonna find from me at this particular point in time. Like, you won't see my new line debuting something like that. But I didn't care, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Like, I didn't care, and I felt very strongly about it, and after figures over niggas it was a revamp of rosie the riveter with saying we can get it because like women can get money too you know it's yeah i changed the wording around and things like that i dressed her up with different tsl patches and stuff like that but that to me was still keeping the same momentum you know and then um what piece did i come out with after that Then you have um, the the one with the cat the pee uh -huh. on a pedestal. 
I don't know if it was the third no, release, that, but that, that wasn't but me. That one that was, was cool too. <laughs> that wasn't me. That was uh, Richmond Hood. Um, oh, oh, but then that was a, okay. a collab with a collab. Um, uh, Jen the Pen. I'm not oh, sure got you, got that. you. So that was her collab with Richmond Hood. Um, I just I, I used remember to model you wearing. For, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got you, got you. You know, I used to do the modeling for the shop. So, <laughs> um, yeah, that was one of their pieces. But yeah, everything up until the fuck 'em all unisex pieces were um, all for women. And then because the men were like, well, what about us? I'm like, okay. And a friend of mine had came up with the fuck a mole design and he had sent it to me and he's like, I think this is for you. And I was like, what? And yeah, yeah it was after that. He was like, yeah, he was like, I, like, this is you. And I was like, bet. And he was like, run with it. And it, everyone ate it up, you know, like it, after uh, it sold out, they were like, we want more and i'm like uh usually do one and done but i guess i'm making the exception you know because it was at that point like leaving money on the table you know it was like a yeah. no-brainer because people wanted it so yeah um, we had uh, put it in the shop at richmond hood so it was selling there it was selling on my website um we made dress jersey dresses for women with the logo um yeah it it That's sold dope. many units and um yeah people really liked it after that i um came out with 1991 fuck em all um which was an ode to myself being that i am born in 1991 um and that was the tupac image so that one also did really well but after that i didn't uh make any more yeah. and um from there, we went and did Anti, which uh, was created in 2015 and dropped in the beginning of 2016, right when Trump got into office. Gotcha. And I felt it was super fitting, obviously, just speaking up against everything that we're against. And um, yeah, it was, it was done on a long sleeve. And after that, I kind of took a break from doing merch altogether, just uh, yeah. for financial reasons, you know, like, I don't think a lot of people know how much work goes into building a brand when you're doing oh, yeah. it by yourself, you know? I know so, the feeling. I know the feeling. Yeah, like, I'll, I'll, I mean, obviously you do, and like other creatives who are in the same boat and realm, they understand, but like outsiders looking in are like oh like why are you not doing this and it's like it's not as easy as you think you know yeah um, and especially because I, I am the like a one woman show <laughs> you know like i don't have a, yeah. a team of people i literally was researching everything you know on my own doing things on my own so it it takes a toll you know so after that you did drop, a great job thank you after that drop i i took a break and in 2020, um, with just everything that was going on, um, I felt it was a good idea to relaunch the shirt and this time just print it on a t-shirt, um, being that it was already warmer months. And um, yeah, I dropped it again in 2020 and donated half of the proceeds of every sale to the bailout project. And we there were able go. to donate like about a five hundred dollars to the organization, and I felt so proud about that because, again, as a small business owner, as an Afro Latina woman, like I just felt like it was my way of giving back to the people that were, you know, like on the front lines and going, you know, like doing that work, you know. So it was That's what my it's all way about. of contributing. And yeah, I was when super proud of that. When you got a call, and you got to answer it. Exactly. And I, I feel like a lot of, you know, creatives do the Lord's work. Honestly, that's how I feel. So, however, you know, that that stems for me to do it, I'm more than willing. And that's what I want to do, you know. Yeah. So, you, you made some good points where, you know, you were doing merch it was hitting these moments. Then you were also dealing with things that dealt with kind of the not fun stuff. Yeah. Like, 
someone <laughs> someone jacking a design, mm-hmm. you know, figuring out the ins and outs, like dealing with legal sides of stuff, you know, that like mm-hmm. they're not fun. We see the design, we go to the exactly. shoots, like that's all cool, but then there's there's a whole other side of it where like there have been times where I did a design and I had backlash from a bigger company or something. Really? And yeah, it, well, maybe it was on a different site or maybe there was an element in there and they were like, yo, you know, you got to take that off. That, that That's yeah. too much. And it's like this learning process. So, you know, and I feel like it ties exactly into all the stuff you talk about now on MMLism, mm-hmm. mental health and different things. Like you were like, you know what? I need a break. I need to figure out where to go from here. I need to find peace. I need to understand some of the stuff behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. So maybe we could kind of even transition into that because you made a conscious decision to be like, things are popping, Mm -hmm. but there's some, there's some clashing and now I have to figure out where to go. And like, so like you, you know, your mind is kicking in, your soul is kicking in and be like, wait, Mm -hmm. what's this? So like, maybe you could kind of talk about how important mental health is to you. Absolutely. How that tied into, you know, your transition with taking the pause to kind of rebrand and figure all that out. Mm-hmm. Just uh, finishing off your first question, though, about being a woman in this male dominated industry. It's very hard. You know, um, yeah. there aren't many designer, female designers out of Staten Island that have done what I've done. And I don't say that to be. um what's the word, um, braggadocious, um, it's not that, but it's like a lot of people, you know, like to downplay it, but then if a man does it, it's all the praise, and it's like, why is that, you know, why are we not accepted, you know, and as if we're not contributing to this industry, and, you know, it, it can be so discouraging sometimes, because you're like, okay, you know, so now what, you know, so dealing with that, and then having the anti-design stolen, or revamped, because my design said anti, and the woman who stole from me, she changed it to say pro, Mm -hmm. but it was the same concept, same font, same everything, (laughs) and, um, I actually think it was funny because a friend of uh, of mine from college had purchased one of my shirts over the summer of 2020 when I had relaunched it. She did a photo shoot with a photographer that she knew and super sick, right? So I'm posting it. She shared it. I'm not sure who else seen it, how far it really traveled, clearly pretty far. <laughs> but now the woman in California is replicating my friend's photo which you know the hit was on the back so you know she's standing there she has a short cut she has a big hoop earring shorts on and her model did the same exact look Mm. so it was just like so obvious you know so when i reached out to that uh situation i i had a mix of um emotions obviously being that i've been doing this now for 10 years so it's like damn you know not only that you look like me you're another afro latina woman who's in this industry and you know how hard it is for us so why would you feel the need to do that you know um but again you know i just had to turn it from being a lesson into just a stepping stone, you know, and just to keep going. But it did, it hit me like a ton of bricks. I won't even lie. Um, I felt really depleted afterwards. I felt like everything that I had been fighting for, everything that I've been trying to get across was just like wiped away in a sense. And it was like, damn, you know, like, where do I go from here? Because now, you know, like I was already feeling the need to rebrand anyway, but it was just like, the, the process of getting that started and then things, you know, uh, the pandemic hit. My mom was diagnosed with cancer earlier that year. It was a lot of things hitting, you know? Yeah. So 
it was like when that happened at the end of 2020 i'm like it's just never ending this year <laughs> like it was just one yeah. thing after another and i was like you know what like i just i'm gonna figure it out but it definitely um did do something to my mental health i was down and out i was not feeling sorry for myself but i was upset you know and i had a lot of people reach out to me like oh but like that's a good sign you're you're popping because she stole from you and she has a bigger account and she's reaching more people but yeah she has a bigger account and she's reaching more people and she just stole my design and sold it to all her people you know like so now you're yeah. profiting off of something that wasn't even yours and you're definitely making bank off of something again that isn't yours so it's like come on you know like why did you have to do that but um you know yeah. and a lot of people too felt like you need are you okay like you should calm down and i was like i blocked a lot of people i deleted a lot of people because it really showed me who was who in a sense and a lot of people felt like you're being so emotional towards this you damn right i am <laughs> you know like yeah i don't have any kids but this is my kid you know like and yeah. i mean i have a, a i have a dog so that's my first son but <laughs> you know it's like yeah no of course I don't like that. I don't like when people tell a woman to calm down, especially yeah, I, when she's oh feeling God. something and she's but feeling even, the type of way. It was and even like, other women that were like, you should calm down. Like, it's a yeah, it's yeah. a good sign that you, and I'm like, it's a good sign because it, it shows what that people are paying attention. I know that already. And that's part of the yeah. problem. And that's what I speak against, because I know that people see me, but they pretend not to. They pretend that I'm not influential, but in reality they're picking up pointers you know and it's like that's not fair because give the credit yeah. where it's due like people work hard to do these things you know it doesn't just i don't come from money you know like yeah i've been busting my ass to do this so it's not just like oh like who cares it's not that for me of course so. and i i know a lot of those people they probably didn't mean to make you even more matter like they were probably just trying to console you and be like yo look at it this way like i know i do that yeah. a lot and a lot of the time it backfires on me where i'm like but just look at it this way it's really not yeah. that bad and they're like I mean, well i'm but then on your side you're like no wait i'm dealing with this and yeah. i'm the one feeling it mm -hmm. and like yeah, of course your outlook is trying to contribute but no wait i'm re i have to deal with this my way right i'll take all these little bits of advice mm -hmm. and um I've, I've dealt with it too and where yeah. i've been i've been that person where i'm like hey well why don't you look at it this way it, it could be and don't get me but, wrong yeah. like after you know that situation like i said my mental health took a hit and i was just feeling like now what and like i said on top of everything else that had been going on so i checked into therapy and it was one of the best things that i had ever done and um one thing that I learned was you just really have to keep going, you know, like nobody's going to yeah. do this shit for you. Like nobody's going to come and see you like yep. you have to do it. So it's like I, I couldn't just at being a creative, I couldn't just sit back and watch everything that I had done up until that point. Just like be a race because this girl decided to steal my design. No, you know, of course. so the wheels got to turning and I created new logos. I have two trademarks in the works, you know, like, like I there said, a shoe rail line, a handbag line, um, providing endless content for mental health, like, um, giving spiritual guidance, like, I'm not stopping because there's no need to. <laughs> That's There's why no I say to. don't stop dreaming. You know, exactly. whatever it is, you may, you know, put on a different uniform in your dream. Mm -hmm. Maybe you want to be a DJ af instead of doing clothing. Mm -hmm. But that's why I say keep dreaming. And I always say dream that I'm a Jill of all trades because, like, I literally have dabbled with every single thing. Except, like, music. That's, like, the, been the only thing that I haven't yet touched. Oh, wow. And You're, like, one of knows? few people that were never a rapper. <laughs> Who knows? I I low key always wanted to be one. <laughs> I feel like I could hear like poetry. I feel like you could definitely drop some poetry vibes because like 
on the single lady i've written so many poems um, yeah yeah that's what i was saying there. i feel like so, you, you definitely have poems in you but you yeah you've you said you <laughs> clearly wrote them yeah and it's true Same. like you deal with some crazy you deal with some crazy shit or you deal with someone who's a, who throws you kind of off Mm -hmm. But, like, the best revenge is just to keep bettering to keep yourself going. and keep, like, take care of yourself. Find it. And that's what you did. You're like, you know what? I'm going to take care of myself. Maybe I got thrown off the road a mm -hmm. little bit, but I'm going to find my way back on it. And I'm going to I'm going to make my own path. I'm going to create my own lane again. And you could take my street sign. I'm just going to paint a new one. Like, exactly. I don't really I don't really give a damn. Like, but like what I like about what you did you took a pause, you know, and you figured out what was important for you in that moment. Mm -hmm. And you were like, you know what? I need a minute. I need to figure yeah. this out. I need to talk it out. Mm -hmm. I need to find someone who could be there for me for therapy wise. Yep. Boom. And you took some extra steps to better yourself mm -hmm. or to heal yourself. It wasn't Absolutely. on some, oh, I want to be the best this. It was like, yeah, it wasn't yo, I'm hurting. I need to feel better. I want to feel yeah. better. I was going through a lot of things. Like I said, my mom was diagnosed with cancer in February 2020. So a little, a, a couple of weeks before the shutdown actually happened. So we yeah. were dealing with that. Then she caught COVID. Then like uh, other people around me were catching COVID. It was like just a, a whirlwind of things, you know, and it was hard to stay creative while being stuck inside the house the whole time. You know, yeah. like I... I did enjoy it in the beginning because I felt like I I had moved out of my mom's house um, a couple of years before the pandemic hit. And, you know, like living on your own and, you know, paying bills and adulting, like that was a whole new experience to me. So, like, I just felt like I was on grind, like just work, 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 like yeah i would try to have some type of life outside of work but then it was like before you know it it's sunday and like you have to do it all over again so it was just a constant go so like when everything stopped it was like okay i can finally enjoy the apartment that i've been paying for that just hold that's been just holding my things <laughs> yeah. because i was literally there for just a few hours every day just to like sleep and leave so it was like finally i could enjoy my space I, you know, I was taking care of me, like doing things that, okay, like let's decorate in here. Let's, I taught myself how to do my nails because obviously everything was shut down. Like I, I wasn't just sitting around, but I was taking oh, yeah. that time. You know, I started, I mean, I've always cooked, but I was cooking more, you know, like just, of like, course, let's stop eating out. And it was just feeding my soul in other aspects, you know, and of course. Um, that time was definitely needed but after you know the situation it was just like yeah i need to talk to somebody i need like a professional and one thing that i did enjoy of, this is not my first time in therapy by the way so you know I, i've i've done it as a child i've done it um okay as in a teenager um it wasn't something that i always stuck with but um yeah. this time around I, I said, no, like, I, I need to do it. It was really, like, up to me. And um, one thing that I loved about my therapist was off rip, she told me that, like, she didn't want to be my therapist forever. And initially, I was kind of like, what? You know, like, it was kind of unheard of. But she told me, she was like, I don't want to have to treat you for a long time. And that was the realest shit I've ever heard. Like, because you don't see medical professionals do that, you know, they want you yeah. to continue to continuously see them because they want you to then be hooked on their medicines and things of that nature. And she was not about that at all. And I was so yeah. grateful for that because I wasn't, you know, like looking for someone to say, oh, well, if you're feeling depressed, let me write you a prescription for a pill. Like, that was not what I was looking for, you know. So, yeah. um, I was in therapy, uh, for a couple of months before she, um, she had relocated. So she wasn't able to be my therapist anymore. Okay. And I wrote about this in the blog. Um, 
I can't remember what what the topic was or anything like that at the moment. I've or, I'm already up to week 46. <laughs> so That's good. I've been touching topics all over the place, but um oh, that's powerful. Spoke... She basically was like, "Yo, I'm here for you, but, but we're going to figure it out. <laughs> I want you to become self-sustainable too. Mm-hmm. You know, like let's get you to a point where you could you don't always have to need me, but I'm still here for you, exactly. which was powerful. And then it kind that's of even so deep. that sets your mind like, oh, wait, I may not have mm-hmm. this person in a few months or a year right. or so. Well, How do it, I get to a point where I'm on my kind of doing this without her? Different because it like her relocating was out of the blue. It wasn't something that I was prepared for. But I thought back to what she had told me from our first session. And I said, like, our time is ending because she's taught me what I needed to know. Yeah. You know, I was like, it's all happening for a bigger reason. And I'm like, I'm not even mad. You know, like, like, it was the best experience that I had. And I could have easily stood in therapy and just, you know, uh, got reacquainted with somebody new and did that whole process over but I didn't want to because a I didn't want to start over with somebody new because it's when you when I started with her I literally rehashed like my childhood traumas my teenage traumas my early adult you know life traumas like everything that had been going on so like for me to now it, it was exhausting this work is not easy like and I always say that like it's not for the faint of heart but it's the best work that you'll ever do like this is one job that I try to advocate for because it's something that people need you know like yeah. people truly do need to to have that self sustainability because you can't depend on others you know to make you happy to think that they're going to come and save you or think that like they're obligated to do something for you or whatever the case you know and like when those things happen people have reactions people act out and it's because of feelings that they're not really dealing with and it just it was super eye opening and i was like wow. you know what like it it was the best, you know, like I was sad to see her go, but at the same time, I knew that it was for a reason. And she did teach yeah. me so much in our short amount of time together. That's and great. It was just, it was so powerful. Like shout out to Janelle. <laughs> yeah. Shout she out was, to Janelle. She was amazing. Um, But yeah, it's like I, after, you know, our time together my mom had just relocated so now i was like really by myself and everything kind of hit at once so i was like this is really a lesson because you know not only is my mental support having to relocate but now like my family support is also relocating and it was a little i don't want to say isolating but in a sense yeah. yeah and you know i i had to navigate for myself you know, and just like really do for myself. And it was eye opening and it taught me so much, but it made me stronger. And with that strength, you know, I, I started the mental health Monday series. Um, I had started that while I was still in therapy. I stopped uh, seeing Janelle in June and I had started the mental health series in May because that's when mental health awareness is. So we're okay. almost approaching a year with the series all together. That's but, great. Um, it was something that I had started off a whim. You know, I was just like, oh, I'm going to like use the blog to talk about mental health awareness, being that it's Mental Health Awareness Month. And it just took a life of its own. Like everyone was like, you should continue this. And I was like, yeah, I don't know. Should I? Should I not? Um. But I'm happy that I did because I get these messages sometimes that just like really fill my heart because they're like, I look forward to this, you know, like you're helping me even though like you may think you're not. And I'm like, like I love it, you know? So that's all I've been trying to do is help people, even with the clothing, you know, and the statements that it has, like. 
Yeah. I'm rebranding, but the sentiment is still the same. You know, like I'm, I've evolved, but at the same time, I'm still true to me. And I think that's what I would want to highlight the most out of this interview is that, yeah, I've grown, I've changed, I've evolved, but at the same time, like the core of me has not changed. You know, the, the things that I believe in have not changed. And I'm only just getting started really (laughs) you know like it's just growing it's just growing i think it's just so important to have a routine Mm -hmm. and and as creative people there's this like oh well you know we don't need a routine because we're creative and it's like it doesn't matter but like Mm -hmm. me as being like a proof of concept i can't ever say i I've been doing my thing and haven't had a real job, quote unquote, mm-hmm. like where I knew I had to be in at eight. I got out at right. five. I've always worked like it was a job, mm-hmm. of course. Right. And right. I never was like unemployed um, besides like maybe two months of like mm-hmm. the last 15 years. But yeah. like I never really had a routine. And like what I think is great you made a routine of delivering positivity to the world yeah. and yeah, it, also it, self it, healing yourself, fun. talking about what you're going through. It's like a journal, mm-hmm. but also shining light to people to be like, yo, I know you're going through this. Look, look what I'm going through. Mm-hmm. This is how I kind of found my way. Maybe it could help you too. And you know, you, right. and take it or leave it, and no hard feelings. And exactly. that's what I really like about everything you've been doing. And it hasn't Thank changed. You. Literally, since I met you, you were on this vibe. And it's really just how you mm-hmm. delivered it. Like, is it on the single lady? Is it on MMLism? Right. Is, it, is it through the brand, the clothing? I'm it's glad like, that you, <laughs> you just mentioned It's been consistent delivery. the whole way. It's just how um, do you plan to deliver the, the envelope to people? Right. But I'm glad you just said that because I feel like a lot of people sometimes talk about my delivery and things and how sometimes it can come across as, uh, you know, or oh, yeah. too harsh or, you know, not subtle enough or whatever the case. And I don't mean to come across that way, but there are some times that I think people need to hear a message a certain way, you know, like you can't always uh spoon feed information such as especially with the mental health because that's i think what part of the problem is right now is that like a lot of people like i said going back to the therapy like my therapist told me that she didn't want to treat me forever but that's not the the same therapist that everybody else sees you know like it's not all the time that you hear that come from a medical professional they want you to be in those mind frames because that helps their business boom so yeah you know and it's not to say that medicine doesn't work or things of that nature of course you become reliant you know on on medications for these problems it's a treatment it's not really healing you know, exactly. it's, yeah, I... it's a surface level treatment that's going to, okay, it'll keep you all right for the next few hours, for the next day or so, of but course. then you're, you're upping your dosage. You're not, you're still not feeling good. You're still, yeah. you know, so you're it's becoming like, dependent. You're she very dependent gave you a vibe. Either. She sparked, she planted a seed that said, wait, we want, I want you to become independent. Exactly. I don't want you to become dependent, even though exactly. I'm still here for you and I got your mm-hmm. back. But it's I don't like want just... you to feel like the only way is with me. And mm-hmm. that's powerful. And I see the power yeah. through the content. I see the power through, you know, the merch. You sound, you know, yeah. you sound very enlightened. Um, yeah. I know, you know, dealing with some of the drama that could mm-hmm. throw anyone off their course. But I really, yeah. you know, think it was dope that, you know, you 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 seek help you you were also aware that you it. yeah you were aware to do it you did uh-huh. it because some people it's tough not everyone yeah. like there've been times i can't say i've ever been to therapy 
Mm -hmm. Um, I've probably bit off the ear of lots of people in my life, you know, shout out to all them and especially (laughs) shout out to my lady. Um, I know I say a lot of the same stuff over and over. It's because I'm just keep dealing. (laughs) I'm still dealing with it in my mind. So big yeah. shout out to her and everyone that got me through. And of course, yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. I did have a course. support system before, you know, seeing Janelle. But I knew that I couldn't continue to do that to them as well. You know, it, yeah. it was eye opening to me that I'm like, OK, like I can't keep like ranting and raving about the same things to you because <laughs> like who wants to hear it? You know, like, yeah, yeah. And that's just being honest. Like, of course, I get that. I get that. So it was like, okay, no, I'm going to just, I'm going to seek the professional help to help me really transmute what I'm looking to transmute. You know, like I come from a, a divorced family. So I have those father wounds and things of that nature. Like those needed to be healed. You know, it was really about that time that it was like, okay, like help little Melanie. Because I'm already big, you know, like, uh, um, now I'm 31. Yeah. I just went 31 a few weeks ago. And happy birthday. It's, thank you. And I think your birthday came up, so happy birthday to you, too. Yeah, yeah, I feel like I'm, um, like, day after, shortly it, after. Yeah, you're, what, the... 18th of February. February, I'm the 19th, so, yeah, the oh, next Oh, nice, day. good week, good week. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's, like, you know, like stop uh stop putting you know the the blame or you know stop not taking accountability for things you know like oh but this happened to me so like i don't trust people because of this or oh i don't like this because this is a trigger for me like one thing that she taught me was really like your triggers are your own like yeah somebody could trigger you unknowingly or even knowingly you know like in a narcissistic way, like, oh, I know that that she doesn't like that. I'm going to do it anyway just to push her buttons. But how yeah. you react is on you. It's nobody else's responsibility to take care of those things. So it's like yeah. that was one thing that, like, I've always been an accountable person, always been independent and dependable. But there were still things that needed to be worked out. And with that time with Janelle, it was, like, just super eye-opening. And I was able to do that. And it's not to say that i'm like this holy healed person and like i know everything but i'm sharing what i know because i know that other people go through it and i know that it helps like without a doubt you know whether people say it or not whether you like my content you know on instagram or not like because it's funny i had this conversation the other day with one of my friends um I was telling her, I'm like, it's so crazy that the mental health content, like, is sometimes the least like. Like, I'll get, like, one like, two likes, and then, like, I'll post a picture of, like, my face or something, and it's, like, a hundred likes. And I'm like, why is that? Like, you Maybe know? you start, maybe you start, maybe you learn the strategy. Maybe you start with your face, and then you swipe, and then you get the con. You unlock actually, this. Yeah. <laughs> I've actually stared away from like posting myself as much as I used to because even though my brand is solely me and that is what you know has people gravitating towards my pages or any of my platforms it you know my personality things of that nature the way I dress the things that I do but I'm over that like it's like this is an exterior you know like that's it but it's really internal that needs to be taken care of you know so that's what i've so been true. trying to really promote and no, advocate for i respect so it because you could have hacked the day. system and be like oh I'll, I'll, okay you know i'll post this you, i'll wear this i'm gonna guarantee this engagement this you know like we see it all the time it's so it's played out it's like no yeah. like it has to be deeper than that so i'll take the five likes like it's fine. I'll take the couple of views. It's whatever. But I know that people see me. That's the whole thing that it's like people are seeing me even if they're pretending not to. Yeah. You know, and so it's like. No, nah, I totally hear you. And and what I think is cool is you're you're aware of this. You're like, you know what? I could post myself. I could be wearing this and I know I'm going to get all this. But like, no, I want to mm-hmm. deliver content to you to make you think i want content to maybe you dig a little deeper i 
I tweeted the other day after a conversation with my friend I, and uh, the same conversation that I just was saying about, you know, posting one thing over the other and the difference in likes. But I'm like, you know, a lot of people don't like the mental health content, I think, because it puts a mirror to them and they see themselves in every topic. Like, there's no way that you come across the post or even if you come across the, the blog and you see these posts, like, you're going to shy away from it because if you're not ready to do the work, that's why yeah. it's like, oh, no, you're you're showing me too much. You know, like, I feel too seen right now. Like, going to go hide. I'm going to go flex because that's the cool thing to do. You know, like, so yeah, it's, it's the like, mood. I, it, I know you, you may that. be in the mood. I'm in the mood to, like consume content sometimes like oh i just want to see this right. or oh, see some food see some french bulldogs or whatever but then something may be heavy for me in the moment where i'm like oh man i'm not so it's just timing you know yeah. but i think that's what's I, good I about not... people could count on the right. content to release right and it's there it's on a, it's exactly. on spotify it's on all these other streaming platforms you can listen to the audible version of it you can read it whenever you're ready the content is yeah. there. Like, it's not going anywhere. I'm not going to stop. You know, I'm going to continue talking about it. And I'm not a licensed medical professional. I'm not a therapist. But trust me, like, a lot of the information that I'm sharing is things that I've gone through. So with experience, you know, I'm telling these stories. But also research. Like, I'm not just pulling things out of thin air, you know. So of course. Like you said, it's the timing. You know, when people are ready, they'll, they'll tap into it. But it's there. Yeah. And what I love about the internet, it's like, we don't, we may have 5,000 followers, but like, maybe only 50 are really into it. And even mm -hmm. if you help one, you did your job. And exactly. Even if that one is you, and it yeah. should be you. <laughs> And I think it, that's the most important thing. And absolutely. I think that's what I really take from this. It's like, no matter what the world's saying, no matter what how the world's responding to what you're saying, you got to know you're taking care of yourself. And you got to be doing what's right absolutely. for you. And there's all these distractions. There's all these things coming all different ways. But, mm -hmm. like, don't lose sight of loving yourself. Absolutely. You know, and... And the days are not going to be all beautiful and roses and smelling like looking like, you know, Georgia peaches on a Sunday afternoon. Like it right. may not always be that way. It could be a stormy no. day in Shaolin with snow everywhere. Mm -hmm. Then right. the SMY is <laughs> on the way. Like it just started snowing. Mm -hmm. And that's OK. But it's like, yeah. how do we plow this snow? How do we kind of wipe our windshield wipers clean? How do we like, exactly. all right, maybe we look Just, back in the rear view, understand mm -hmm. what was going on yesterday or the day before. Let's figure it out. Let's move forward. And I think that's yeah. what I really take from your content is to like take care of myself, love myself. Yeah. And who gives a shit about what anyone <laughs> yeah. thinks. And it, But if it could help people along the way, that's even more of a blessing. And, you know, we I know. want Sometimes that to happen. I feel... I, I feel, and I, I say this often because I'm like, you know, like, I'm taking my own advice, you know, like, this is not just stuff or fluff, you know, that I post to, you know, seem cool or be in the trend, because obviously, over the past few years, you see how the talk of mental health has become so prominent, whereas before it wasn't, oh, yeah. you know, like, even a lot of our parents and grandparents come from a generation where everything is swept under the rug and talking about mental health was not a topic of discussion like it's just a no-no you know like you just don't do it so it's like to to come out of that and to speak against it it's it's a milestone in itself you know because not everybody's yeah. capable of doing it you know like there's family members of mine that are stuck in their ways and maybe they're always going to stay stuck in their ways, you know, or friends or whatever the case, like it's all about timing, but I got to worry about me. I have to focus on what I'm trying to do and how I feel because how I feel determines my environment really, you know, like it's of a course. reflection of, of what 
I'm going to be doing, what I'm saying, who I'm around and, you know, how I feel. So that's important to me. Good. And, and I think I, you know, any, we should all take that from this, like Mm -hmm. love yourself, love yourself. And yo, you had a shitty day. That doesn't mean you're a shitty person. Like you just had a shitty day. How do we We find a way to get better? We have good days, but I feel like at the end of the day, the days aren't coming back. I agree. Really... The shitty day is when I don't wake up. I I just look at it as, yo, that sucks right now in the moment. Damn, mm-hmm. I got this email. I got to figure this out. It's not that bad. Like, and yeah. of course, I don't deal with no. I'm not comparing my drama to anyone else. But oh, like, at least for but... me, of how I figure it out, we all like, go through stuff. I'm here. I'm here. Yeah. No, we all go through stuff. Both, you know, male, female, it doesn't matter. Um, and we all need people, you know, like that's another yeah. thing that it's like, you know, you can't always act like, oh, too cool for school because that's not, that's not realistic. <clears throat> Excuse yeah. Me. But, you I know, it's you. like we all need people. We all need help sometimes. Like something that I, I learned agree. was definitely accepting help. Like I was so hyper vigilant and just like overly independent to like a fault that it was just like, girl, like, accept the help you know like there's people that are trying to help you there's people that are you know around you trying to support you and like because you're in like your own tunnel you know like you're blocking everything else and it's not always that like it can't be that you know there has to be duality in every situation that's what keeps the balance of course yeah independent doesn't mean doing everything on your own it just right. means and being independent, needing help, paying your bills, make like, you, right. doing what you got to do. You got your own whip. Like you're independent, exactly. but like that doesn't mean re- don't reach out to your homie, don't right. reach out to your and man or your your home girl, whatever. It, it also doesn't mean that if you accept the help that you're not independent. And I think of that's kind of like the notation that goes behind accepting help. It's like oh, like, but then I'm not independent because I need the help, and it's like. <sighs> It, it doesn't work that way, you know? Like, it's okay. Like, we all need help. So Yeah. That was, like, something that I, I learned more so, you know, this past year that, like, accepting it. Because sometimes I was pushing things away, you know, that were meant to help. But at the time, it's it was pride, just, like... Ego, pride, dealing ego, with things. Um, dealing proving with things, yourself, yeah. Proving things. And that I, I wrote about this... Um, I think the topic was called like operating out of spite. And I talked about when I started the single lady and when I started TSL, it was all to prove a point to the people that told me like, you ain't never going to be shit. You know, like, yeah, like you're not doing nothing with yourself. And it's like, I, it was a stepping stone and it was a, like a learning experience to have created in that space. But now where I'm at today I look back and I'm like, I no longer want to create from a space of that, of that nature. You know, like I'm not of course, creating or doing any of this to prove anything to anybody. You know, like I'm a hundred percent rooted in myself, you know, um, and the belief of myself and my plans. Cause if, uh, you know, I'm so happy that you had made that comment about for the past decade that I've still been consistent in who I am from when you first met me because I've only had social media for about, I mean, over a decade now, but in that time frame, it's like, I haven't changed. If you really look like, yeah, I may have evolved and, you know, grown up in certain aspects, but at the same time, like the root of me is still planted in the same spot, you know, like, I'm still yeah. that little Spanish girl from Shaolin that's trying to make her dreams come true. Like, it's never changed. And it's like sometimes people are like, oh, like, she's different now. Or, you know, she she's a know-it-all or whatever, you know, the content, the notation is. But it's like, am I really different? I don't yeah. think so. <laughs> people are always going to have – what's cool, it's crazy. Like, as we grow, so does – more people's opinion on us and it's like yeah think about kanye imagine if kanye was like oh damn these people's opinions like he would be he would be 
F, he, he wouldn't screwed. be who like, he is. He just continues and continues. Cont- and like, but and look I, at if it. you watch the documentary, I love that uh-huh. he spoke about how, you know, for so long, he wasn't trying to prove anything to himself. He was trying to prove to everybody else that he was yeah. who he is. And I've related to that so much because I feel like so many times I'm like, especially with the tweets, because the tweets are easy for me to just get off, you know, like, it's like, oh, you know, okay, cool. And like, sometimes they're positive, but sometimes it's like, now I got to say this. And, of course, you know, I, 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 I screenshot them and I share them to Instagram so that my followers there can see it. And it sparks a lot of debates, you know, sometimes, and it sparks a yeah. lot of conversations that are like, oh, like, girl you just said that out loud like yes i did <laughs> you know like because who yeah. else is gonna say it you know who else is gonna say it nobody's saying it and it's like everybody thinks it or people might silently feel that way but like they're not speaking up and it's like it's done for you know you can't keep yeah. quiet nothing's nothing's gonna be done by keeping quiet so it's like and, just yeah and speaking of these tweets, why don't we bring a few up? Let's just break okay. a few down, a minute or two <laughs> each. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, as we were saying, you know, you do drop, you know, tweets, of course, how you're feeling, what you're going through, you know, how you handled something. And sometimes they're misunderstood or maybe they're taken in a different way. And w- which I like right. about, and wh- that's what I really like about the world, though. Like, you could say something. I may not agree because I'm I've been programmed and grown and like conditioned a whole different way. Right. But like I'm gonna still hear you out. Mm-hmm. And like it may not be what I do. It may not be how right. I feel. But I mm-hmm. we could learn from everyone talking their, their truth. Yeah, I mean you know? everyone here you are so. learn to agree to disagree too sometimes, you know. And That's we could okay. still be friends. And we could still be cool. Right. Like it, it doesn't, doesn't have, have to, to be divide that us. you have to be the yes man and say, Yeah, she said that I agree with her. Like if you don't, yeah. you know, like I'm not looking for that. I don't want no yes men around me. I want yeah. people to if maybe I said something and they don't feel the same, we can have a conversation about it. And yeah. You know, where it goes is where it goes, but it doesn't need to be a hostile one. It doesn't need to of be, course. you know, talking over or anything like that, but. Yeah, let's break some let's down. for. It. Yeah, so hold on. Let me pull these up. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Here we go. You could see that? Yep. Okay. Yep. Do you want me to read it in my voice, or you want to read it in your voice? Uh, you can read it if you like. All right. I get the community's mental health right every Monday and give them spiritual guidance on Friday for free. So a thank you, a like, a comment, a share, a tip, all go a long way. If you're here to support, I welcome you with open arms. If you're here to measure, miserably lurk, I wish you healing. So... What's that one all about? That one is about, I feel like, again, you know, people are pretending not to see the things that I'm doing. And I see who's watching. And sometimes, like, the same people who are quick to watch the story can't even like a post. So it's very telling to me who's just watching. And there was, like, a... I I posted that on Instagram and it was a slide, which I added another one talking about, you know, with my meet with my social media platforms, I'm looking for community, you know, I'm not looking for surveillance. Like, I don't need you watching me just to watch me like, let's engage, you know, like I'm looking for engagement, you know, I want to help you. And if you have something that maybe can help me, let's talk, let's share ideas, let's build, you know, with one another. But don't just come here to watch you know and that and i feel like mentioning that i do the work for free is just because again what is it to like a post what is it to share something that you know you feel or agree with or whatever the case but like oh no i'm not gonna share that you know like it's hater energy and i don't like that (laughs) all right let's keep it moving uh 
Dignity doesn't have arms to hold you. Mm. But that shit will make you stand up straight. It sure the fuck will, bro. <laughs> it sure will. That is about, you know, have sticking to your moral code and having the dignity to say, you know, I am going to continue forth with this. I am going to continue doing this or have your beliefs or whatever the case is. But, you know, sometimes that leads you down a lonely path sometimes. And until you find tribe that's committed to wanting to understand you, it's you're by yourself in those moments. And the dignity doesn't have arms to hold you, but that should send you up straight. You know, like you're going to walk nice and tall every time that you're, you know, going forward in what you believe in and what you're trying to do. And fuck it. (laughs) That's That's poetic. Believe in yourself. Sometimes that's the only thing lacking between you and your dreams. Faith. Mm -hmm. That was from a rant that I was going on. Um, But yeah, I feel like I've noticed so much that, especially, I don't want to get too political with the the vaccine and situation. Um, But that was referencing that because i hated seeing how so many people lost their jobs because you know they didn't want to be vaccinated or you know they don't believe in it or whatever the case they weren't ready or whatever the case and it's like but they felt so obligated to do so because it's like oh well like i have a family i have to do this like or oh i want to go out and like this is going to be the only way to have a normal life and it's like i feel like All of that, and for what? Because now, as you see, they're being lifted. So it's not even a requirement almost anymore. And it's like, in time, it's not going to be a requirement. So it's like, you fear monger people into believing something that they don't even believe in. But now, because of fear, because of worries and all these different things, they're doing something. And they feel like they don't have a choice. Yeah. And it's like, and that's what I was talking about there, because I'm gotcha. like, they want you to be in that mind frame. You know, they want you to have this scared mentality towards this whole situation so that they can continue to control you, you know, in a yeah. sense. And it's like, you can still follow your dreams. You still have choices. Like every day that we wake up, we have a choice, you know, like. It, and sometimes people are like, oh, but what choice do I have? Like, I have to, my choice is I have to go to work. Okay, like, if you say so, you know, you can really, if you really wanted to do something else, then you would do something else. You know, like, I've stood so tall on, I'm going to share my status, but I, I've stood so tall on not being vaccinated, which, in you know, in terms, it, it, you know, left me without a, a, a job and, you know, like being the struggling artist that many of creatives, you know, deal with at some point in time, you know, where it's like, okay, I don't have really an income coming in, but like I'm hustling to make all my other things come true. And it's like, I stood so tall on not getting it because I was just so against it. I was like, no, nope. yeah. Like, you're not about to fear monger me into feeling like this is what I have to do in order to make money or to go places or to do whatever. And I'm like, no. And then a few months later, it's like, oh, the mandates are over. You know, no. Yeah. I mean, you know, some places are still requiring vaccines, whatever the case is. But it's like in time, it's not going to be a thing. And it's like. It's so crazy because so many people lost their jobs for standing tall on what they believed in. I know. I know a bunch. Yeah, it's like, it's sickening. So it was like, that was from a rant that I was talking about, like people believing in themselves. Because it's like, if you believe in yourself the way that you put your your belief and trust into other people that really don't give a fuck about you, (laughs) like, then, you know, like you can be making something come true for yourself that you don't even see feasible because you're so blinded by that lack. Yeah. There's a scene from The Bronx Tale. It hits me so hard when 
Sonny and Colosiro are watching the Yankee game. Mm-hmm. And he's like, Mickey Mantle. He's like, is Mickey Mantle going to be paying your bills? Does Mickey Mantle put food <laughs> on the table for you and your father and mm-hmm. your family? Does he care about if your father has a job? And it's like, you got to, no matter what's going on in the world, no matter who's in charge, no matter who's the head of whatever, be the head of you and get up, exactly. take care of yourself. Exactly. You got to do what's, you know, you got to take care of yourself. Exactly. I, it's not a one size fits all. I can't say what else to nope. do for you. Take no, care of yourself. Go out and get it. Go take care of mm-hmm. yourself. You know, help be there for your family. Whoever is in charge or at in the head of anything is not going to come and knock on your door and hand you food to give to your child. You have to go out and get it. Yep. I feel (laughs) you. I feel you. That reminds me of, um, you know, I I always kind of get this like weird look when I tell people that I have a survival of the fittest mindset. Like I fully believe in that because I feel like. If the world went to shit, right, which it's looking like it's good there, you know, but anyway, um, you know, like if everything went to shit, like who's coming to save you? You have to be there for yourself and your family. Nobody, like nothing's, yeah, like you have to do for yourself. You have to, you know, like you just have to do it. It's like not being greedy. So that, you need no, to be good not. to get to make your people good, your family good, your wife, your husband, Absolutely. whoever it is. If I'm not good, not... I'm rubbing off on everyone else. Exactly. And that's exactly what I was that ties into what I was just saying earlier about like, you know, having the internal reflect the external. And it's like if it ain't right within, like you're not gonna be good you know like nobody's gonna come and make you happy like you have to make yourself happy no relationship no friendship no family member nobody like yeah people can make you happy but they ain't making you happy (laughs) you know like and i know that sounds so like oh but you You gotta feed yourself i i hear you exactly i hear you exactly so let's get to this one i advocate for people to know And reach their power within so they don't feel like they've been left with no choices like what we see happening. Yeah, that goes exactly into what I was just saying. Yeah. Because I feel like so many people felt like, well, I have to do this. Like, this is the only way. And it's like, is it though? Like, now you're doing something that you don't even want to do because you feel like you have no choice. Like, when you think about it, it almost sounds crazy a little bit. And it's like, I get some of the reasonings, but I can't relate. I can't relate. And it's not to shame yeah. anybody. It's uh-huh. not to, you know, act like as if I'm better because I've had these those conversations like, oh, like, you're, you know, you're not back, so you think you're better than everybody who is back. So, like, that is not the case whatso- nah. whatsoever. Like, everyone has a choice, you know, and everyone made choices. But yep. th- this is more for the people who felt like they didn't have a choice because they felt like there was just nothing else. And it's like, yeah. you, did you try? You know, like. Yeah. Did you know like there's options and sometimes it doesn't you know it's not always easy it's not i for so long i was because i'm not vaccinated like i had to sit out you know from doing things i can't go nowhere because i'm not vaxxed can't even like enjoy things that i used to enjoy when things were normal because of that like i couldn't even go to a museum and that's something yep. that I love to do, you know? It's like, you couldn't even do something as simple as that. So it was, like, suffocating. But I stood tall in what I believed in because I was like, no, nah, that's not for me. Like, and I'm not about to go and do this just so that I can get a regular job and, you know, follow this protocol that they already put in place. You know, like, we're taught to get a good education, go to college, get your degree, have your nine to five, and then work until you're able to retire and you know that's not even a realistic thing anymore like it really isn't yeah so many people living that 
yeah, some people that are living that life are still struggling and unhappy as fuck. So it's like, is that really the way, you know, like, it's not, you know, like, and a lot of, I think, us creatives were, I mean, I, I know for me, at least, you know, and I know other people, too, in the same boat that it's like, our creative dreams weren't always embraced or um, accepted because it was like, mm, that's not going to make money. You know, it was easily shut down because it was like, mm, no, that that's not going to work. That's not the norm. You're not going to be successful because that's no. And it's like we find ourselves doing things to please others, but then it's like it's not really for you. Real talk. Let's get to this next oh, one. That was about. I try to promote freer thinking for us. So the generation that we birth can obtain that luxury because it surely wasn't given to us. Mm -hmm. It's taken a lot of unlearning, reparenting ourselves, and transmutation to deprogram from these said ideologies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, just hey You sound like a scientist there, actually. <laughs> um. Yeah, I mean, you know, like, we we are programmed, all of us, you know, we are programmed. Like I said, the go to school, get your good grades, go to college, get the degree. Like, I have a college degree. A lot of people don't know that. <laughs> um, I, I have a college degree. And ask me how many times it's been useful. Not too many. And it was a pretty penny for that piece of paper. <laughs> Let me tell yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. It's like you find, you know, like yourself going in debt and like all of these things just to keep up with what's the norm. But what's the norm for you? You have to decide that, you know, you can't. Oh, well, my parents want me to be a doctor and a lawyer. So like this is what I have to do. Like, no, if you want to be a ballerina or you want to go be the next Basquiat, go do it. You know, like. But you got to go do it. Real. You can't but sit right. home and you tweet. You have to go do it. And that's not, I'm not saying you. Exactly. Uh, no, no. we're talking yeah. about Twitter. But like to anyone listening, your day can't just be you posted today. Right. There's You're not putting any, and I'm not talking to anyone in specific, but I'm saying I know mm -hmm. friends that that's all they did today. Yeah. They posted and that was it. They said they were mm -hmm. going to work and they didn't. And I'm challenging them like, grind like those people that are in nine to five that wake up at five mm -hmm. that come home at seven yeah. on the same way they would work because mm -hmm. they kind of get frowned upon oh they're there were and i'm not saying you're frowned upon them but a lot of people are like oh no, nine no, to five, no, screw no. the nine to five but yo they mm -hmm. have a format that actually works if you apply that towards your dream work mm -hmm. for work for i mean for so many years i was I was doing the same thing for so many years. I had my desk job, like, just like yeah. every other body, you know, like, I was <laughs> grinding, 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 like, and I hated it, especially the my last job that I had prior to the pandemic, like, Lord, did I hate that one, <laughs> you know, like, oh, yeah, I, it, it was just miserable. And like, just, oh, it was terrible, really. Um, I, I was able to make a move, though. I um I went to Good. HR. I made, you know, like a whole new position for myself in another department. And then as soon as that happened, the pandemic hit. <laughs> so it was like, okay, but at least like I made a way to get out of the situation that I was unhappy in to make something yeah. better come from it. Cause like I knew I couldn't just quit the job. Like I had my rent to pay. I have my dog to take care of. I need to take care of myself. Like you know, I yeah. had things that I was needing to do and, you know, um, it's not, I, and I get that, you know, that's why it's like, I'm not insensitive to the people who are feeling like, oh, well, like I have to do this because I have to work. But like, if there was something that you really wanted to do bad enough, you're going to find a way and a will to do it. That's all I'm trying to say yeah. with, with these, you know, these messages. And it's, of course, it is to challenge, you know, the norm. Because it's like the norm doesn't work all the time, you know. Like yeah, and you make your own is... norm. You make your mm -hmm. own norm. I know, 
Uh, my boy Chris, Robots Will Kill, this guy is an mm-hmm. absolute savage. Like, he yeah. started a, basically a graffiti social media site mm-hmm. before Facebook and MySpace and is like, oh, gee. Like, he drops something, he sells out instantly. That, yeah, that, boy, be, <laughs> that boy has a real job. That yeah, boy has that a real is job. That a real job. No, like, and there's nothing he, better no, no, than... he has actually a real job. Like, with benefits, with union. Gotcha, gotcha. Like, yeah. like he he gets on the ferry. And there's nothing wrong with there's nothing wrong with that. But and then he gets I mean, to it when he gets also, home. Right, but there's also nothing better than having your passions be your paycheck. Like there's yeah. nothing wrong with that either. There's nothing wrong with okay, I'm gonna work this nine to five or I'm gonna work this ten to six or whatever the case. You know, I'm gonna do this until I can do this permanently. There's nothing wrong with that. Like I've again, oh, yeah. I've done it. You know, he like, does, and he actually does both. Where mm-hmm. like, he's in Colorado, does full scale murals, making toys, doing so eighty eighty piece art shows, and mm-hmm. then wakes up at five goes to his job like like my dad did right like my uncle did my aunt yeah. but then comes home like a savage at six after dinner and then just paints 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 paints, paints, paints. but then yeah. he keeps doing that and then you multiply that by a year you multiply that by 10 years and then all of a sudden now you have merch you have you, designs you, you have, have tens of toy. thousands have... of hours of investment mm-hmm. in of yourself <laughs> right and That's no what one's it's really all about investing in yourself. Yeah. So let's get investing to this. Yourself. It really takes guts to do this kind of work. Mm-hmm. It surely does. <laughs> like, it's not um, a, a job that you get paid monetarily, but spiritually, I think that it's very rewarding. Um, and it. It's not easy for everybody to do it. If that was the case, everybody would be healed, right? <laughs> you know, we wouldn't even be having this conversation, really. Like, yeah, everyone, you know, I wouldn't say isn't meant to do it. I just think that some people aren't ready to do it. And, you know, some people stay within the excuses of not wanting to do it or having this fear based mindset to say, oh, like, no, I, you know, like. Because you're just so stuck in your ways, but yeah. I mean, fear is, I think, like the number one aspect in all of these conversations that holds people back. You know, it's it's what stops a lot of people right in their tracks. Like, oh, nope, I can't do that. That's too scary for me. And it's like, okay, I mean, you can live a scared life if you'd like. You know, nobody who's t- who's telling you what. <laughs> But yeah. then when you're unhappy and you're constantly sad and like going through these spirals of depression and things of that nature, it's like, when is enough become enough to say, hey, like, I really should start doing this because I need to work on myself, you know? And I don't think that there's any like age limit to start. I think that the younger, the better, honestly. But it's like it's not to discourage people that are maybe 50 60 years old that are feeling like you know what i'm miserable right now like i really need to work on the issues that i know that i have that i've been ignoring for x amount of years like and whether they do it or not you know it's only you're we are in charge of ourselves you know so only you can control that. Nobody's going to, and this is work that nobody can do for you. It's almost like exercising. Like, okay, you're gaining weight, right? And you want to exercise or you want to lose the weight, but you don't really want to exercise. So, I mean, are you going to really lose the weight if you're not putting in the work? Probably not, right? <laughs> so it's like the same yeah. concept of that. You're like, nobody's going to do it for you. It's all internal. Like, only you know how you feel. You're in charge of your feelings. You're in charge of your thoughts, your emotions. Like, only you can keep them in check. Only you can, you know, transmute the pain and your traumas. Because I think, too, that especially black and brown people, like we come from a lineage that's so deep-rooted in pain that we do carry that, you know, from beyond us. 
And it's so important to get to the root of those issues because then you only continue the cycle when you don't break those chains. And yeah, that's like something that is why I, you know, I talk the way that I do and I'm very adamant about the audience that I'm trying to reach, you know, like, because I mean, especially as an Afro-Latina woman, it's like, I know what we come from, you know, like it's hard. It's very yeah. hard. And like, you know, a lot of us don't come from the best circumstances. Uh, not, I'm not particularly speaking about myself because my mom did a hell of a job, you know, like yeah, nothing was shout perfect, out to her. but she, shout out to mom, <laughs> um, you know, like she did what she could and that's the thing too that I think a lot of us um we come from families that again have experienced so much pain and trauma that when we are children and being raised by our parents like when I look back you have to understand that your parents you know like and you have to look at them for who they are not so much as like oh that's like my mom that's my dad like you they're human beings too you know, like, they also go through real shit. They also have real life experiences and real life traumas and pains that they never even dealt with. And now adding children and household and adulting on top of that, it's like, a it's, it's a stressful thing, you know? It's hard. Of course. And it's like, with that, it's like, that helped me transmute a lot of my childhood trauma because I started looking at my parents for who they were, you know, like, okay, like, my mom is my mom, and my dad is my dad, and I love them, and I respect them as my parents, but they are just human beings, you know? Yeah. And we all go through real-life shit, you know? Like, you can't put anyone on a pedestal because, like, oh, that's mom, that's dad, or that's grandma, and that's grandpa. Like, yeah, these are, you know, prominent figures in your life, but they have issues too, you know? And, like, we all need to be sensitive to that, and I think, like, the more that we talk, the more that we heal, and it it's better than just dealing, because that's what a lot of people do. They just deal with their issues. Oh, like this is just how things are, you know. Like, let me just come on, you know. <laughs> like, it's like no, like you have to really Real get talk. to the root of it, you know. Of course, so, that's definitely something that you know, I keep trying to bring to the forefront. And you're doing an awesome job. I'm really Thank hype you. about the brands, the, the merch, you. the bags. <laughs> so for you. anyone who doesn't already know you and who hasn't been part of your journey, where could they, where could people find you and get um, a dose of the MML isms? Okay, so uh, the blog is the only site available right now. So that will be www.mmlism.com. It's pronounced awesome. MMLism. <laughs> yep. A lot of people are like, how do you pronounce that? <laughs> and I'm like, it's MMLism. It's all things me. <laughs> um, but awesome. uh, yeah, I have my web shops for the merch uh, shut down right now as I'm oh, still yeah, working yeah. on them. And so and then those the Insta? links aren't like, available where can they get yet. That? Same thing on Insta, oh, yeah. right? Uh, MMLism? It, yeah, underscore MMLISM. Gotcha, and, gotcha. Uh, same with Twitter. Um, those are like two platforms that I'm really super active on that like if you comment or tweet me, like you can, you know, I'll reach back. Um, yeah. I add I add myself on Facebook, but I'm not really on that platform as much, yeah. to be honest. But um, yeah, all my um, socials and things of that nature are on MMLism, so you can find links to that. Um, this the podcast is on there as well. Um, I have awesome. Um, I also always tweet and um, post and share the content like every week. If anyone sees my story and is like, why is this girl still sharing <laughs> Monday's post? That is what I do. Um, nah, I think yeah. sometimes <laughs> I found that people were like getting annoyed that I was constantly sharing like the week's content throughout the week until, you know, the next post comes. But I'm like, bro, like 
what <laughs> you know like i have to Gotta chop it myself. up yeah you know like, you're sampling so, you're digging exactly. in the crates and you're just sampling exactly yeah, so and just you know sharing the links you'll always find them on my story on the page and um yeah links and bios the podcast is available on spotify you can follow me there um, awesome. that's also MMLism. Um, it's an audible version of the blog. So I, I had a lot of people tell me, I wish this was audible so that I could listen to it while I'm working or yeah, while yeah. I'm working out or whatever the case is. So I just cool. turned it into an audible version. Um, it's not my voice. It's not an official podcast like this. Um, but cool. you know, still something for people that are on the go to stay tapped in. That's um, dope. We I'm are really proud of you. Thank you. So You've much. come such, you know, as I said, as I said, you didn't change much, but you also have changed, and you've evolved quite a bit. So thank you. I'm really thank excited you for to see. Me. I really appreciate that. <laughs> of course, I remember that first drop, and it, mm -hmm. um, it was cool to help you know to print it up for you, your ideas and stuff. And just really see where you're taking it. I can't wait to see where you go from here. Yeah, this with the, with this whole the official new conversation drop is and... like a, a, this whole conversation is just like an, a a full circle moment, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like legit. So it's so crazy. Yeah, and I'm very grateful. Thank you because Thank all my you. guests they actually help me on um, my podcast. Uh, as I said, I would kind of bite the ear off of the same people. <laughs> for many yeah. day in and day out especially during the pandemic and like these interviews were really healing for me yeah. at a point where i do them religiously now and i'm like yeah. months ahead of my schedule now mm -hmm. like when i'm gonna put it out just because i truly enjoy it and if yeah. i had one view or zero or a million at you know what you were talking about yourself you have to find what what's healing you Absolutely. seek it and for me, this is healing. I'm um, just talking to people, hearing their story, sharing mine a little bit as well, and mm -hmm. kind of just bat brainstorming and just, you know, kind of letting go of, like, the weight. Because I work alone all day. So thank right. you for uh, talking to me. <laughs> and shout thank out to all my guests. Me. You all really helped me, all my guests. And shout out to all my people with the Type 88 show. I'm very grateful we're going to be adding a DJ to the Maker Park Radio Edition very soon. Dope, um, this guy that. is a true OG, and I'm very grateful to have him part of the show. So I'm going to be announcing that soon. This will probably so even dope. come out even after he comes out or she. I don't <laughs> want to give it away. Um, okay. So that that may not even make people may be like, wait, don't you have this so-and-so as <laughs> a DJ hearing this? But in the moment this is what i'm going through and i'm really excited mm -hmm. and um so yeah so i'm very grateful thanks again for being part of the thank show thank you for having me and i'm very grateful also for your friendship for seeing me and for recognizing me i'm forever grateful yeah so ev everyone listen and remember tune in we're on maker park radio once a month now with the hip hop edition of type 88 show and then i'm dropping a new episode every week on YouTube premiering. Uh, this is the new season, so we just we're just dropping it, and um, I you love know, that. people out here following their dreams. And then you could get the hip hop edition on Maker Park Radio, where we got the freestyle, we got the DJ set, and we got someone in the element of hip hop part of the show. And That's um, fire. so I'm I'm happy that this is you know premiering on the YouTube and the Spotify and Pod. And, um, you know, we've been dreaming for the evening, but as I say, don't stop dreaming. My, my Never. Home girl here... I mentioned that in today's blog. Yes. Shout out to you. And my today's friend... blog was about manifesting. So I thought that was super dope because, I mean, if, uh, in case nobody read it, I'm going to give you a little spoiler. <laughs> a few weeks ago, I was sitting here thinking about all, you know, uh, all that I've done within this past decade and what I'm pursuing now currently and I've I know I've come a long way and I was saying to myself quietly like I want to talk about this you know but oh, wow. without getting on a platform and just like 
speaking, you know, like I want mm-hmm. to have a conversation with someone about this and speak to the things that I'm doing. And oh, wow. then you hit me up. So wow. I certainly manifested that I feel like That's and crazy. today's post is about manifestation and it's pie day. So, you know, it goes for infinity. <laughs> like <laughs> it's just That's fire. all the vibes, all the vibes. <laughs> So, that's really um, cool so so grateful so so grateful and it's a full circle moment 110 percent. yeah and who knows maybe we collab later on and you know like the possibilities yeah. are endless you know i'm i'm all for it uh you <laughs> always have our support thank you, know, you. um you know 10 years it's been 10 years since, you know, we, we made some merch. It wasn't even an official collab. It was more or less me just being like a print shop. So, right. yeah, official collab would be super dope. Yeah. Um, this is what I do. So, you know, hit me up whenever I know you got some rollouts, different things. But I'm always yep. ready to go. Um, okay. Yeah, I'll I'm definitely really reach out to you because I think that would be really dope. And I think it will work well. <laughs> just, you know, I felt like a little before... <laughs> um, when I first came out, it was more explicit and a little oh, out yeah. there, you know, especially for your brain. So it definitely wouldn't have made sense then. But I feel like where I'm at now, I can see it. So I remember that. Know. I remember the first time I was like, you know what it says? I can't, I definitely can't say that I, but like we did print it, you know, and I, I know I keep repeating myself, but. But yeah, and of course, I would. That'd be dope to collab. Yeah, that's what I do. I love working with creative people and people that are passionate. And you know, everyone who tuned in, you could drop bombs on all these awesome things that my homegirl said. You know, mm-hmm. take care of yourself. You know, seek help. Yeah, there's so many gems in here. Accept help. Accept help. You know, don't fight yourself when you. Oh, I'm in the. It's okay. You it's okay. are still independent. Um, mm-hmm. And you deserve support. You deserve yeah. love. And you deserve people Absolutely. to be in your life. And it's okay that they help you. And even people that are not in your circle. You know, my friend yeah, even... went to a therapist, made it happen. And look at her. She's helping people on a daily. And I'm really proud of you, homie. I'm, really, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what else you do next. Can't wait Thank to see the so brand much. drop, re, uh, the new Thank drop. You. And make sure to go follow her on all the social. Check out MMLism.com. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. And remember, don't stop dreaming, everyone. Never. <laughs>